Well, good morning. My name is Betsy O'Hagan, and I manage web and marketing for Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society, a chapter of the National Audubon Society that's based uh, in the greater Cleveland area. And uh, today I'm talking with Rosemary Mosco, who is a naturalist and artist. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning. And Rosemary will be speaking, uh, is a speaker on the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society's member meeting and speaker series for the 2020-21 year. And uh, Rosemary will be talking on uh, Tuesday, October 6th at 7.30. So, Rosemary, hello, and uh, I wonder if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little about who you are and uh, where you are and, and the work that you do. Sure. Uh, so, I'm Rosemary Mosco. I'm uh, located kind of in and around the U.S. Northeast, um, although I have been to your area for um, the Mothapalooza event, and I'm really sad that I can't go out there for this talk because it's so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Um, so I am a science writer and a science cartoonist, and I mostly focus on birds, um, and I have been making comics under the name Burn and Moon for gosh, about 15 years, which is a lot of time to think about. Um, and I make comics about uh, kind of the weird and funny things that animals do and also plants and sometimes even bacteria. And I try to foster a love of nature while um, talking about some environmental issues and hopefully also just amusing people as well. Very, very good. So I'm reading the description that's just the uh, description that describes your presentation and and the title of your presentation is Bird and Moon Comics with a Naturalist Knowledge. Um, so and they go on to say that if you haven't heard of Bird and Moon Science and Nature cartoons, this is the presentation for you. But what about those who know about Bird and Moon? Then this is still the presentation for you. <laughs> is a wonderful naturalist who puts her naturalist eye into cartoons that are fun and also accurate. You will smile, if not laugh, at the antics of birds and other wildlife in her renderings, all based on what she has seen. So we will also learn more about Rosemary, and I hope we can a little bit today too, her interest in the natural world and how she is inspired to put pen to paper. So we're, we're all really, really looking forward to this. Uh, presentation. But this morning, um, so where are you based? You said the northeast, um, upper, the northeast uh, U.S. states. Um, yeah, where are Canada you from too. and can you tell us a little bit about your background and how did you get connected into all of this? Sure, yeah. Well, so I grew up in Ottawa, Canada um, and uh, Ottawa, it's, it's the capital of Canada, and it's a really nature-surrounded area. It's, um, there's all sorts of beautiful forests. There's also a lot of fossil deposits there, which was something I really got into as a kid because living in a city where you could just go and crack open rocks and find cool fossils was, it's just the coolest thing for any kid. It was like treasure hunting. It was so great. Um, so I've always been really interested in art and science, and I read a lot of newspaper cartoons, and I just really liked the idea of making people laugh, and then I sort of started adding in the science because that was what I was kind of thinking about, but I felt like at some point I was going to have to pick one or the other because I didn't really think that that there were careers that would let me do both of those things. So I sort of thought, okay, well, I'm a kid. I can do all kinds of stuff. I'm going to have to pick. And then as time sort of went on, I realized that actually art and science have like an incredibly long history. Um, lots and lots of famous, you know, ornithologists were also artists. Um, lots and lots of artists celebrate science in their work. Um, there's science just even in terms of the material that we use for art. It's, it's a natural combination and we shouldn't see them as separate because they can really help each other. So once I realized that there were options, even if they're not 
super clearly demarcated, even if there isn't a list of here's the next step, then I just sort of was hooked. And I have sort of been, my career has been kind of a lot of meandering and trying different things and uh, exploring different options, but always just sort of trying to figure out how to keep doing this stuff that I really love. So yeah, I'm a big proponent in encouraging people to blend that stuff. Well, I agree with you. I think art and science are in are, are just intertwined naturally. So um, now it says in your biographical information that you're a science writer and, and, a, and a cartoonist. Um, and if I may, I'm just going to read this, that your Bird and Moon Nature comics are, are, were the subject of an award-winning exhibit at Cornell's Museum of the Earth. And they collected in the book, Birding is My Favorite Video Game, a 2019 ALA great graphic novel for teens. And then uh, it says, your bio says that you also co-wrote co the New York Times bestselling book, The Atlas Obscura Explorer's Guide for the World's Most Adventurous Kid and wrote, graphic, wrote a graphic novel about the solar system. So. So you certainly seem to have so far managed to reach deep and broad. Can you tell mm -hmm. us um, about some of these projects um, that you did and, and why they were really fascinating to you? Sure, yeah. Well, I'm de <laughs> I don't know about deep, but definitely broad. <laughs> I've been exploring, oh my goodness, so many things. So um, for a lot of years, I worked doing communication for a nonprofit, so very similar to what you do, um, and it's so yeah. much fun. And then I got an offer to do a book for the first, second um, science comic series about the solar system, and it was sort of this out of the blue, last minute, can you do this thing? And it was one of those moments where I, I'd always wanted to do books, and I thought, okay, I'm just going to make this leap, even though it seems ridiculous. I'm not an expert on space, but I realize I am an expert on communicating science and finding what's exciting in subjects that I'm unfamiliar with and finding ways to translate them to people, you know, like me who was sort of new to it. So I took the leap. It was very scary. I wrote the book. I had so much fun. Um, the artist on that one was John Chad. He's a genius, just amazing. And then uh, once you kind of have one book and you sort of put out feelers, other stuff sort of happens. So uh, I put together a collection of my cartoons called Birding is My Favorite Video Game. Um, I'm someone who plays video games and watches birds, and I think they're very similar in a lot of ways. You know? And some of the games I play have – you know, so I've been playing Animal Crossing, which is this new big game, and it's full of absolutely accurate insects and fish and stuff that you can catch and, like, it's science information, and it's just, you know, I'll play, I'll catch some tiger beetles at Animal Crossing, and then I'll go outside and catch some real tiger beetles, <laughs> and it's really funny how, um, how those can be kind of similar. And then uh, the Atlas Obscura book was unbelievably cool. That... Um, they brought me on because of my knowledge um, of writing for kids and, and putting in a lot of science because we add a lot of science to that. The Atlas Obscura guys are so cool. Just asking them about their life experiences. They're, so there are people who find all of the weird, quirky places around the world and kind of try to talk about what it's like to go to these sort of weird off-the-grid places. So this book was a kids' book version of their award-winning, you know, books and websites and stuff. And that was just a total blast. And they also have, you know, a big presence. So it wound up on the New York Times bestselling list, which was just mind-blowing for me, you know, because I draw bugs. <laughs> it was so, 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 so cool. So that was just a delight and a really fun puzzle to work on. And then I actually have – it's so frustrating because I, I have five books that I can't talk – that I, that I can't, like, go into detail about now, but that are all coming out in the future – um, the one I can talk about is that I have a picture book coming out through Tundra, uh, which is about butterflies and why they're gross. And I'm, I'm so excited. That's going to be out in April of next year. And then there's a bunch of other stuff coming too. So that's sort of my day job. And then I do the cartoons on the side. But, it, you know, I'm never bored because there's so much 
cool stuff to do. I feel well, really lucky. Absolutely. Well, it sounds so much fun, and it sounds as if you're really um, – uh, open to all the possibilities that come to you and then developing them as you're interested. Um, let me ask you, as a youth, um, how did you, were you into science then or did you, I know that you, you spent time exploring, um, did you um, take any particular classes in school that you really enjoyed and then when did you do a further education? Tell us a little bit more about your educational timeline. Yeah, um, I think when I was a kid, uh, a lot of my nature interests came from summer camp, actually. Um, you know, I loved my science classes, but I really enjoyed going to nature summer camp. I had this one summer camp that I went to until I was, you know, it was up to age 12, and then I hit 12, and then they brought me in as sort of a junior volunteer, and then when I was old enough, they paid me to work there, and I just couldn't, I couldn't leave it alone. It was so amazing. So I was really lucky to have that opportunity. I also have a mom who's fearless about nature and, you know, would catch snakes for me, and, you know, we would walk around flipping rocks for snakes, and so she really help me get into nature, but I think it was a lot of that sort of uh, extra stuff that I did, you know, volunteering at the local nature museum and at a bird care center and that kind of stuff um, that really solidified it for me. And then undergrad was a bit of a, I was a bit of a lost soul at that point because I got to grad, to undergrad and I asked my advisor, okay, how can I combine art and science? And he said, oh, you can't. They're totally different streams. They have different course requirements. You know, you can't do it. Don't even try it. So I sort of bounced back and forth between the two, and I settled on anthropology because it's got elements of both, but I wasn't really passionate about it in the way that my, you know, people in my class were, although I learned some really cool stuff. And then I graduated, and I sort of thought, okay, what do I do? Um, and I kind of wandered around trying different things, making comics for a while and sort of and volunteering and just sort of feeling a little lost. Um, and then I uh, got really lucky. So I saw a career counselor, which was really helpful. And then I got really lucky and I got into a program called the Field Naturalist Program at the University of Vermont, which is a master's program that takes people who sort of want to take their science outreach stuff to the next level um, and just want to learn more about all of the different systems and the way things connect. And uh, it's just this tiny program. They took, I think, nine people in my year. And we spent two years learning to write, learning to do public speaking, and traveling around the state, getting our hands dirty, you know, slogging through the swamp. It was just pure heaven. So that was really kind of when everything came together, and I thought, this is exactly what I want to do. And then ever since then, I've been doing you know, all sorts of different uh, communication things and, and outdoor things. But, yeah, I think it, it can be hard if you're into those twin loves of science and art to have a clear career path as a, but as a kid. Um, but there are ways to do it. You just kind of have to really feel around and really talk to a lot of people. And it may – don't be worried if it's not happening in a clear way <laughs> because it can be a little bit confusing – for a little bit, but you will slowly wind up where you want to be. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I just think that that's so true. Um, and when we think about how many centuries, uh, you know, humans have been, have been exploring all the curiosities and the intermingling of science and art. I'm, we have so many well-known people like, you know, Leonardo da Vinci and, uh, mm -hmm. It, so as you described, you know, it's really, at least from my experience, just is about pursuing, identifying and pursuing your passions and then letting your curiosity go wild and then just going with it because uh, each of us, um, you know, the brilliance I think of nature is, is that each, each individual, whether it's human or otherwise, um, we're all in one way very similar, but at, in another way, we're all very unique. So um, for, uh, I think that for, the, for those of us who are able to critically think, we can bring brand new perspectives 
um, that that are truly unique. Well, thank you for sharing your story about as a youth. Um, let me ask you, I have another question while we're on curiosity and, and exploring and discovery. Is there, is there anything um, in particular that you're curious about or wonder about these days? Hmm. I mean, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. Yeah, my, my issue with, with creating new comics is never that I lack material in the science sense. It's always just, oh, I have to be funny with it. Otherwise, it's, <laughs> it's not going to catch on as much. So, um, no, I'm always reading. I think more recently, I've gotten really into insects. Um, I have been, you know, we're all, we're all sort of stuck at home. and um, the critters that you'll find just outside your door are absolutely fascinating. So I've been taking a lot of macro photography, you know, of like a little bee that was on my stairwell or like the, the cool caterpillars that are eating my kale, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. And I think insects are a really good, really fascinating and pretty accessible way to get into science. So I think, I think that's sort of been my, my focus lately. Uh, is that is that kind of stuff? Ah, very interesting. And and let me ask you: Do you do you think about the future? And from your perspective, what what do you think about the future? Are there any sorts of um, uh, points of enlightenment that you see or wonder about? Yeah. Well, the tricky thing about being a conservationist is that. You're entranced by the beauty now, and you're also constantly heartbroken um, by what's happening and what could potentially happen in the future. So I have a lot of cartoons about climate change, which is kind of my pet issue. You know, it's by no means the most important issue. Um, you know, it's hard to rank issues in terms of importance, and things like habitat conservation and so on are are really, really important too. I just sort of fell into climate change because of um, some of the classes I took. But I try to make comics about the the science and, and sort of the feeling of worry and how to um, counter that worry by taking action and finding community. And that stuff, I have a couple climate change comics that I was just, I mean, they're just short and cute, and I was just bawling the whole time I was drawing them, which is how I know they're really genuinely emotional. But I think uh, that is really important to me. I think, it's, I think it's irresponsible to just focus on cool animals without placing them in, you know, a cultural context and a conservation context. So I try, I don't know that I always succeed, but I'm trying to look towards the future and to think about future naturalists and what kind of a world they're going to they're gonna see too. It's really important that they get to see all the cool bugs on their porch that, that I get to see. Yes, I understand. I understand. Um, well, is there anything you would like to add? I don't, I don't think so. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this talk. Uh, I think it's going to make you laugh as well as think. Uh, my, my talks tend to be pretty silly and I'm, I'm really trying to make you, you know, celebrate your own love of nature while having a, a pretty nice time. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn some weird, strange, gross new facts too because I will definitely tuck those in as well. Oh, well, that sounds wonderful. Well, we certainly look forward to Bird and Moon, Comics with a Naturalist Knowledge, with you, Rosemary Mosco, uh, on Tuesday, October 6th at 7.30 p.m. And this will be, of course, a virtual meeting. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, meet and see Rosemary again and, and learn all about the wonderful things that she's going to uh, help us learn about. Uh, and you can do that by going to the WCAS Virtual Conference Center at the wcaudubon.org website. Well, thank you, Rosemary, and have a wonderful couple of months until we see you again, and thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. I'm honored to take part. I really appreciate chatting with you. This has been lovely. Well, take care. Bye.
bye bye.